Hey guys, J.K. Whited from the Baseball Rebellion here to do you your Tuesday breakdown. And uh, today we have Ken Boyer, a uh, player that uh, I did not know a whole lot about beforehand. That's kind of why I chose him. You know how I like to go back in time. I'm a big fan of going and watching the great players of uh, of the old days and kind of the way they moved and, and, and seeing if we can learn from, from guys who are successful a long time ago. And, uh, and Ken... Ken here's got some good things going on for sure. He definitely has some things that that could have been better, in my opinion, that uh, maybe would have lead to a little bit more consistency in some in some places and contacts. And uh, but this was a good side shot that I got of him in one of those home run derbies. You can go at YouTube and watch him versus Harmon Killebrew and Hank Aaron and some other guys, and a lot of fun for me to do. And I hope it's a lot of fun for you guys to watch because I know that uh, you know we don't always. Uh, watch the guys that played, you know, 40, 50, 60 years ago, and it is fun to do. Um, so here we go. And um, and this is a guy who, you know, taller in nature a little bit here. You know, he's, he's got some long legs, and he utilizes them here. Nothing too special in the box as far as the stance goes. Um, it looks like he does start with his front foot a little bit, uh, you know, a little bit open perhaps here. Again, it's tough to kind of say exactly with the with the, the dark uh, dirt in his, in his cleats and, and, the, and the video quality of the time. But, um, you know, overall pretty standard stuff. He does keep his hands pretty low. Um, you see that a lot in, in, in the guys that played in those times per that time periods because uh, the bats were a little bit heavier and, and they like the feeling of kind of having everything down below their shoulder because he's going to lift them back up here in a second um, as he gets going. And if I call for something today, uh, please excuse me. I have been a little bit sick and uh, just trying to get over a little bit. So uh, here we go into his stride. And uh, from here... He has a little bit of a leg kick. Now, it's nothing to, to write home about. It's nothing like Batista or, or Donaldson or Hanley or, or some other guys that you might like to watch on TV nowadays, but it is a little something. And um, you see a lot of guys that just started in their stances and just kind of went forward uh, pretty pretty quickly and abruptly and uh, without a lot of kind of sway or rhythm to it. And he kind of had a little bit of a kick here. Uh, just kind of sets that back leg on the, in that double inside load, kind of like a pitcher would on a rubber. Uh, but there is no real big push or drive. It's more of a kind of a lift and fall towards the pitcher, which is something that I love to see in guys because you know we know that a big push off the back leg is not what we're looking for. We're trying to really feel gravity and, and our momentum get started with a, a little bit of an angle on that back leg and then just kind of letting yourself fall forward so really really interesting job there of a guy who uh you know again typically you see guys with close stances and just kind of abruptly go forward so a little bit of a leg lift you can see his whole body gets involved in the stride from his his head moves forward his chest moves forward his legs move forward and everything moves forward you can see through those boxes and and for coaches out there who are afraid of the head movement, uh, head movement's a good thing at the beginning. You gotta, you have to move your head. And yet, name a sport where your head's not moving, and you got to be ready to do something, right? I mean, it's just part of the game. Um, you, if you limit head movement, I hope that that player is going to be really big for the rest of their life and, and can get away with size over over momentum. So, you know, we want to make sure that, that the kids know that it's okay to take a big step if you want to call it a step. But, you know, he doesn't really reach out with his front foot too soon. There's a lot of upper body movement. You can see his head move forward, and we like that a lot. So don't be afraid of that. Uh, run towards that. That's a good thing. Um, so from there, you see him really utilize the length of the box here. Now, again, I think it's a little bit short. I, I think he could be a little bit longer in the back leg, but overall a pretty good job and really of getting to a position that we like to see. And you can see once he kind of decides to swing, you're going to see his belly start to open up. So you can see the middle of his belt buckle there, and you can see as he puts his foot down, it's now starting to rotate open more, which is what you want to see. You can see the hips turn out uh, towards the third base side. You can see a long back leg, which I mentioned before. You can see the bend in the front knee. Um, you can see the little bit open front foot here. It's hard to tell exactly, and I don't want to speculate, but it does, doesn't look completely closed. If you look at his, um, you know, his stirrups he's got on here, the stirrups are pointed more towards fair territory, which is great. Um, a lot of kids are taught today to keep that front foot super closed and have it pointed at the other's batter's box. And over time, you know, that's just going to wear and tear on that ankle. It's going to wear and tear on the knee, especially for bigger, more explosive guys. It's going to wear and tear on the, on the hips. And you never know what that might lead to down the road one day. And uh, and overall, not not to mention like the overall wear and tear, but just the, every swing, you're going to get a little bit less power because we know that uh, anything that you do to restrict hip rotation is going to always affect the timing and the, and the speed of the swing. So we want to make sure that kids today really understand that you know it's okay to land with their foot a little bit open and, and, and as much as open as they can get it 
uh, without obviously pointing too much towards third base. But to, to lay and close like that over and over again is not the best way, um, which is why you see a lot of ankles that roll out after contact and things like that. So we're going to really teach our guys to get that front side open. And then from there, um, Ken does a great job of really utilizing his lower half. So you're going to see, and we're going to get to his upper half here in a second, um, but you can really see his stomach continue to turn out even more, more, every frame a little bit more. So you can see him get to contact here at this position, and you can see the side of his body. So you can see his front leg do its job and really straighten out all the way. You can see his back knee clearly coming up to his front knee and the foot coming off the ground in the back, which we talk about all the time here at the Baseball Rebellion. So a really, really good job of, of being super efficient that way. Um, if we continue through the rest of the swing, you can see how he doesn't. his back foot actually goes more behind him here. And you see that a lot well, when guys are having to adjust, I think, to, to difficult pitches. And if you watch the catcher's mitt back here, his pitch, you know, the catcher's mitt starts off down the middle, and you can see him clearly reach kind of up into the left. So I feel like he's getting an up and in pitch here, and he kind of slides his hands at the last second to maybe adjust, and his foot slides back to, uh, to maybe adjust to that pitch. So it's not the most... Uh, you wouldn't call it the cleanest footwork in the world, um, but he does he does allow the foot to move, which you see again a lot of kids today are taught uh, to keep that foot down, squish the bug, all that all that junk. So we're going to stay away from words like that. Um, lower half again, very very good. Now where I think he really loses a lot is is up here. If we look at his upper body, kind of moving up through the swing now. Um, if you see his barrel move away from his head before he even really gets his, his hips open there's a lot of pre-turn uh pre-foot movement or you know pre-foot down uh barrel barrel moves you can see how his barrel starts where i think is a really good position all right he's got this nice bend in the, from to his elbow to his hands to the barrel and you can see that as he goes forward he kind of keeps everything right there it keeps the stretch, but you can see how now from his from his hands to his elbow to his barrel is way more of an open angle. And I just think you lose a lot of bat speed there. I think he, this distance between here and here, um, he doesn't get any acceleration or as, as much acceleration. Now, again, as much is kind of dependent upon a lot of things. You know, he still hits the ball really hard and um, was a great hitter for a reason. Had tons of bats, had, had tons of bat speed, but could he have had a little bit more and maybe hit a couple more out per year? You know, you just don't know. And so that's why we try to get the best swing that we can. And, uh, you know, this is just something, this is a breakdown that I see in his swing. And comparatively speaking, I have uh, Hank Aaron here um, at a very similar position as his foot's going down to the ground. You can see how his barrel stays relatively cocked or angled over his head so that now when he goes to swing, he can get a ton of bat speed back here behind his shoulder, right? So he's able to, ex you know, accelerate the barrel from behind his back shoulder a little bit better, whereas Ken kind of lets the bat fall more of kind of like a 12 to 6 motion from the top of his head um, down to the catcher. And I just think you lose some bat speed there. And um, a lot of the video that I saw, especially in this home, this particular home run derby, he was he got beat a lot on the inside. Uh, lots of rollovers, lots of line drives, foul that were hit hard but never could stay fair. And I just don't think that you know when you let the barrel run like that out away from your head we love barrel run and barrel movement and stuff like that but you know when you let everything get away from you so much it gets really long in his front arm anything kind of middle end to inside becomes really hard to get to uh if you're not one of the best hitters of all time and obviously he was and was able to get the barrel back to the ball more often than not but this is a good example of him really not doing it you can see him kind of get beat uh, the ball goes straight up, uh, and it's a big foul, big foul ball here into the stands. But uh, he tries to bring the barrel back to the contact position, but just fails to do so. And I think a lot of it is that front arm, and his arm's getting really long back here. He moves away from his hands a lot instead of bringing them with him, and kind of that, like we saw um, Hank, and kind of then that cocked uh, arm position uh, where his where his barrel stays closer to his body. And so I think that uh, if you're going to give him a knock, that would be it for me. And uh, for the most part, his, his footwork, like I said, was the same every time. You saw a lot of good back foot action. And again, like, like a lot of players at that time period, you saw these really big finishes um, where guys were turning all the way, which is really exciting to see. We try to get all of our guys, right-handers especially, to, to finish their swings, to, to utilize the, the distance in their swings they can get. And, and so they never, never, never learn how to go slow through the entire swing. Um, you know, he's got the two-handed finish here. Uh, that is not. I don't. We don't like it as much. You know, we want to see that that top hand release so that we can get 
some stress off the front shoulder. Uh, you do see a lot of kids kind of tugging at that back shoulder, especially when they get really aggressive. So we like to see the one-handed finish now. But uh, overall, pretty typical guy for that time period, which is why, you know, I think he stood out, um, you know, with all the other stars at the time. You know, he was able moving his body well. He, he made adjustments, um, but definitely had some holes in his swing. Um, I think you see a lot. I've mentioned this before in some other breakdowns and articles that I think you can see a lot of upper half breakdowns as far as what we would consider a really good upper half uh, for for guys at this time because of uh, there wasn't a lot of skill training you know they weren't you know they were really just moving up there uh, to hit the ball as hard as they can and that's why their lower halves were so good but I think that you know with the pitching not maybe being as fast as it is today and and there's just a better way to do it with their upper half and you saw a lot of these kind of crazy elongated arm actions and and uh, you know violent finishes which is good but you know I just think that today's today's guys are perhaps better to watch from an upper half standpoint um, but definitely definitely from an overall lower half efficiency I think the lower half so these guys were way better so always excited to do breakdowns like this and uh, we're excited to bring you breakdowns every Tuesday if you have questions about uh, Ken here or any of the guys that we do please leave a comment below or a question that you might have about something that he's doing here and uh, let me know what you guys think and again uh, thanks for tuning in and get ready for another great article this week coming out and uh, thanks for listening guys